in art, whether it's an individual piece from a starving artist, or entire movements that have inspired generations, has been influenced by, or is a reaction to, the works of the past. But how does this influence affect an artist's work? And more importantly, how does it affect the perceptions of the viewer? To further explore this, let's look at the idea on a more specific scale. Chuck Reyes, born in Manila in 1985, is one of Singapore's most promising up-and-coming fashion photographers. His works have graced the covers of prominent magazines like Juice, August Man, and Alexis Magazine. As an artist, he's continually inspired by modern photography greats, often basing whole project concepts on the content, style, or techniques of past artists. We analyzed three of Chuck's shoots, comparing the perceptions of each shoot from an outside viewer with our own analysis, which we conducted having knowledge of each shoot's specific inspirations. With this, we hope to see whether their awareness of what has influenced an artist affects the viewer's perception, to see how it gives us insights into the artist's motivation and objective. Taken in mid-2011, this shoot depicts two bold-looking and unconventionally styled models as they pose in front of a completely white backdrop, each photo framed by a thin black border. With no context or background, how would a viewer interpret these photos? In order to get some input from people who that didn't take this module, we interviewed some of our friends. One of them said that the background seems plain to him. He felt that something could be added on to the background to make it seem more like a photograph because it seems heavily edited to him. The part that he doesn't like is that the clothing doesn't seem to match the age of the model. After he was told that this set of photographs are for fashion photography, he thinks that this set of photographs by Chuck Race doesn't seem to suit the purpose because of the emotions and the way, the posture and also the just, just don't fit in. Uh, it, it seems to him like these shots are from movie screenshots. The photograph captured the model's eye, and this model's eye seems very emotional, and that it, it seems to be telling him something personal about the model. And also that this Coca-Cola shirts that in, in one of these shots has caught his attention. That the this set of photographs suit the purpose of. Books which talks about cultural influence. Books which portrays a particular culture to the reader. Thereby, he classified this set of collection in the genre of art and fashion photography. While executing this project, Chuck had drawn specific influence from a prominent 20th century fashion and portrait photographer, the American Richard Avedon. His collection of 125 portraits entitled In the American West his most famous work. Printed in 1980, the series depicted a host of interesting characters atypical to the genre. Miners, beekeepers, the dirty and destitute, with the goal of showing his own perception of what reality is really like in the American West. Chas' collection here, which has taken its influence from Everdon's In the American West, shows clear derivation from the usual fashion photography that tends to over-enhance the aesthetic of the clothes and fashion by the presence of suitable background and styling of the model. This has also indirectly derived the influence of the realism era of art, which subjects are depicted as they are considered to exist without any embellishment, which may, in also, which may also, in revealing the truth, emphasize the ugly or solid. In the American West seeks to capture a portrait of each distinct person that is seen as a single, unique individual that shaped the American society at the early 80s. That is why the black and white and also the plain white background is used. Taking away the color can help take away a lot of unnecessary interpretation of the light source, hue, saturation and mood given off by the color. 
capacity of the person itself. The same reason goes with the choice of empty white background, in which, which lacks any scenery and background images that will shift and weaken the focus on the character that is being portrayed. The black border surrounding the photograph is also another clear influence for Avedon. This black border is essential as it frames up the character in the photograph, hence making the viewer focus more on the person captured in the photograph as a distinct individual, different from the next person in the next border. By comparing Chuck's series with Avedon's, we were able to analyze the decisions he made to borrow certain aspects from Avedon's work. As such, our interpretation of Chuck's photos more accurately exposed what he really wanted to accomplish with the project. Specifically, the idea of revealing rich personalities and characters behind the models through the use of black and white, plain background, border, and choice of style. I wanted to make an homage to Avedon and his style, especially for this series, which was to photograph real people. It's a fashion spread, but I also wanted it to be kind of like a portrait study. So I wanted the models, the, I chose the models because of the fact that they don't look very modelly, they look more like real girls. I wanted them to look like girls who could really be from the American Midwest. And I had the styling done, so it looks like they could be real clothes, even though they're clothes from stores. And when, when the, the models are in the two models are in the same frame. I wanted to have like a interesting relationship between them. I wanted each picture to look like its own narrative. Uh, okay, so I took from Avedon uh, basically his whole aesthetic style. So, meaning black and white, uh, white backgrounds and black borders. And I wanted to use that the same way he, he used it because it removed all the distractions. There's no backgrounds. Uh, there's no colors, so all that comes out is the expression and the characters and the personalities of the people. And the, the black frame just kind of seals it all in one box. The second shoot, a black and white series taken indoors, depicts a lingerie and nightgown clad model as she sensually poses in different areas of the bedroom. We asked an outside viewer to give their interpretation. Um, like when I look at these pictures, I think that these are the pictures that will, like, I usually see in like fashion photography, like fashion magazines, and for the purpose of like promoting like fashion, um, fashion show or like new collection of designers. And stuff. Like the models, the clothing, like the settings make it ev make everything like looks expensive. So I get the sense that it's like luxury and high-end fashion. Uh, things there are like black and white um, color, and then the makeup of the models, which are like gothic-ish, and then like um, the blank expression of the models. It I get the feeling that it's like mysterious and dark. And the poses of the model also suggest that su suggest some. Um, element of sexuality. Okay. For this project, Chaka used the distinct style of French fashion photographer Jean Lucier as his direct influence. Throughout the 50s and 60s, CF began regularly shooting nude and near nude photographs of women, particularly in an indoor or bedroom setting. And it was from these photos that Chuck borrowed certain techniques and images. Chuck actually plays a lot on the erotism and sex, sexy feel of the image. As we can see from the image, this brings up this uh, series of black and white pictures brings about a very deep, dull and very deep and dull sensation. Chuck basically uses the bedroom feel to it to portray a very deep sensuality. So the bedroom as the background, but that emphasizes this dramatic effect of the sensuality and intimacy. Chuck has borrowed the, the format of the, the wide angle lens as suited for the shoot because it accentuates the model's figure as well. Uh, but in this case, 
Park did not, did not take everything and copy wholesale from John Lucia. He basically took the black and white image, the lenses that he used, and the female sexy journalism feel to it. Like with the Abaddon inspired series, the analysis was strengthened by being able to see what aspects of CF style Chuck had chosen to use and attempting to interpret the effect on his final work. Uh, actually, it actually started with the magazine approaching me saying we had to do a shoot inside a hotel because they had a tie-up with a hotel. So I had this idea to do a, a shoot in the style of Jean-Luc Sia. Uh, what, what was guiding me in, in, in shooting these pictures was I was trying to imagine the girl as like uh, a high-class call girl but in a not high class hotel. Um, and since I had to shoot in a hotel, that's what I took from him. It's shooting in these private spaces, uh, in bedrooms, on beds. Uh, it, it lends a kind of private, almost sexual nature to the pictures. And he uses window light a lot. And I think window light is great, also because it creates this really contrasty light with a lot of shadows giving it the whole, the whole mood, adds to the whole mood. And Jean-Luc Sieff used to all, all, only shoot with a wide-angle 21mm lens, which not, it's, it's not only just an aesthetic choice, but it's because if you shoot indoors a lot, you run out of space. It's kind of contained, so you have to shoot wide-angle in order to get the whole view. Uh, the same thing happened on my shoot. For example, uh, this shot, which is I, I shot with that same wide angle lens, 21 millimeters. I was standing right up against the wall and I was standing on top of a desk. And that was as far back as I could go. And to, in order to get all the elements that I want in the picture, I could only use a wide angle lens for that. So that's why I used it. The final series depicts a single model posing in front of a plain white wall. Every photo in the series has a fashion styling that is particularly revealing and uses many earth color tones. Most notably, there is a consistent use of a bare tree branch at the top of each photo. We asked around to look for analysis from other people who had perceived the shoot and they were asked a series of questions based on the shoot. First interviewee we just we think that the shoot is part of a high-end fashion series and it's meant to show off the designer aspect of the clothing that the model is wearing. And she felt that this, this uh, belongs to so-called art fashion because the clothing are not traditionally normal kind of clothing and she thinks it's a form of art. And the thing that she disliked about this series of photographs is that she could not actually figure out what, what actually what are the themes of the program and what it actually meant. The second interviewee, Joseph, um, actually, he had an alternative viewpoint though. He felt the subject in the photograph, which is the model, was likely an American singer and this series of photographs were used for her album booklet. The feel of the model expression and the feel of the overall Im images gave off the emotions, like she was deep in thoughts and full of emotion, which led him to think about music. And The model was dressed rather provocatively in some photograph. So he's classified this as a sort of a marketing campaign um, and he liked the fact that actually it seemed quite controversial to him. This series was wholly inspired by a single photograph from the 1960s rock and roll photographer Astrid Kircher of Germany. Kircher, who is most well known for her photos of the Beatles and for being the lover of Stuart Sutcliffe, took this well known portrait of herself as reflected and framed by a mirror with a familiar bare tree branch protruding downward at the top of the image. Based on Ashley Kircher portrait, Chuck has actually adapted the influence into his own personal vision for his shoot. The use of a bare tree branch is clearly the symbolism of taking an element of nature out of its nature place and placing it artificially as part of the photograph. Most of the expression are emotionless and which goes together with the tree branch which is bare dull and uh, not of life. The first difference was the use of colour instead of black and white photo and the lack of a mirror reflecting back on the subject. Chuck is perhaps trying to portray what actually culture is, is 
viewing as the photographer before she has taken the photo. As actually captured in her self-portrait, she is both the photographer, the subject and the viewer. And what Chuck has done is he has taken these three parts and broken it up. So basically, in, in, to fulfill his personal vision, Chuck is the photographer and the model in the photo in, is his subject. And for us, we, we are viewing his photographs as the viewer. This series was particularly difficult to interpret, even with the knowledge of Kircher's self-portrait, given that there was only one photo from which we were able to draw conclusions. Also, more than either of the previous two shoots, Chuck had deviated further from the shot that had influenced him, only using the imagery of the bear tree branch in what he described was a purely aesthetic way. This made it more difficult to see the common underlying themes or meanings between the two. The magazine wanted to do a shoot with lots of skin, uh, an almost naked shoot was their, their idea. Um, instead of doing an, uh, a very sexual, almost naked shoot, we can do something that's a little bit more open and light and free. And I thought that's what the Astrid Kircher self-portrait looked to me. And since the, uh, the magazine wanted to shoot lots of skin, I thought if we do uh, color series, but with more monochromatic clothes, the skin and the color of the skin and the texture of the skin would come out more. The biggest thing I took from Astrid Kircher's pictures is uh, firstly the whole white background just because it felt, that's what I felt made it more open and more light. Like it was a big empty white room. And I really liked uh, the imagery of the upside down branches because uh, it added a nice texture to the white. It wasn't so plain. And the, the nakedness of the branches made it feel lighter. And also Astrid Kierke's original picture was very unposed, it's very casual, and it's not at all sexual. So if we do more unposed posing, more casual poses, then and nothing overtly sexual, then that would make an interesting series. A viewer's interpretation of art is always subjective, especially with little context or background we can all find vastly different meanings to a piece. Over the last three cases, we analyzed how knowledge of art's inspiration helps give us a more in-depth understanding of its meaning. Studying the influences behind three of photographer Chuck Reyes's projects, we were able to see what elements of past artists he had chosen to use or not use, and how it has affected his work. And by understanding the motivation behind these decisions, we are able to better interpret the artist's objective.